fun little car, but not as fun as it could be. And that might be exactly why it's perfect for you. This is the 2021 Hyundai Elantra N-Line. Now there is also an N coming out. We're gonna specify some of the differences between these two cars and tell you why this one may be better for you. And if you wanna see the other one, I have a release date on that. I know when it's coming. All right, so what we're gonna do today, is, first of all, we do a live video every single weekday at two o'clock. If you're not watching live with us and you just wanna get to the content of this video, you can skip ahead to the three minute mark of this video. In the meantime, we've got some news and some notes and I've got some stuff to share with you. And we're gonna also show you how to join us live if that's something you wanna do. So let me just flip the camera all the way around here. Come on camera, you can do it. All right, look back at my computer here. If you just go to our Kia Hyundai channel on a weekday, and uh, you refresh the page at exactly two o'clock Eastern time, you'll see that that video that was there disappears and the live video shows up. So all you have to do is click into that live video. Somebody's answering a question for me already. All right, click that live video and you're gonna run an ad for another dealer. What I'm gonna do is really quickly tell you a quick little ad for us. If you are in Ontario and you wanna buy a car, uh, Kia or Hyundai vehicle, connect with me. There's a link in the description when this video is done and you can do that. Yesterday, someone called the dealership and within 15 minutes, he bought a Telluride. He was from out of town and it can be that easy. He bought a Telluride from us and simply because he watches our videos. So thank you if that was you, but that's how easy it can be working with us. We are familiar with doing this. We can help you out. And I'm going to skip this ad here. Uh, one of the questions I was going to ask is, did anybody watch the Kia EV6 event last night? I had to miss it. Uh, somebody's already posted their opinion. So I just thought, hey, if anybody else saw it, let me know what you think of it. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, like I said, I did have to miss it. So I've heard from our dealership staff what they think. And I'd be curious to know what you think. All right, uh, last minute to go before the video starts. Um, we've got some release dates on all kinds of things. So before I leave today, I'm going on vacation tomorrow. But before I leave today, I'm going to do a very short um, uh, video to tell you release dates and information on a number of vehicles that are coming up. So uh, check out that video. It'll be a minute or two long, just a few minutes. Uh, but I'm gonna save all that just so I can properly do that. It won't be a live video, uh, but look for that in your subscription feed. If you haven't subscribed, hit subscribe because we are gonna cover a lot of new product in the coming weeks and the coming months. Uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up and I can't tell you about everything. I've got some stuff that I'm trying to nail down and plan that I think you guys will really like. Um, just good information stuff, good people that I'm trying to connect with, um, lots of stuff. And there are release dates and information on all sorts of exciting new vehicles. Santa Cruz, Ionic 5, um, uh, Elantra N, as well as the uh, Kona N are all coming out soon. I'll talk about those in that video. So anyways, that'll take more time than just now. So just hit the subscribe button if you've never done it. And if you're watching today, feel free to hit the like button at any time. Soon is cool. I'm fine with that. All right, we're at the three minute mark. Let's zip around here and take a look at this car right now. Okay, it is the day before my vacation. Um, I'm gonna be a little casual. I'm gonna treat this like a Friday. Fridays are fun days around here. And this is a very fun car. It's the Elantra N. Yesterday we talked about the Forte 5 GT, which is also a Forte GT. This is a newer platform, but you have same engine and transmission. So you have a dual clutch transmission, the 1.6 liter turbo engine that makes more power in this car than anything else in the similar lineup. The 201 horsepower out of this engine, uh, oftentimes it's downrated in that 180 horsepower range. So this one has the full power and it's a lot of fun. However, there's also an Elantra N coming out. So distinction between N line and N. N line is sporty. N is sport. And when I say sport, I mean a level of sport that most manufacturers don't even come close to touching. The N models can be taken right to the track and can compete like as is. They are extreme. They are amazing. And I thought, you know, Hyundai wouldn't have uh, more than enough courage to put out maybe one model like the Veloster. They're making a full lineup of these. So we've got the Veloster N. We've got the Elantra N coming out. I'll tell you about that in a future video that I'm launching today. And the Kona N all coming out again this year. Uh, and they are track cars. So this car, where does it fit in the lineup? Well, this is a car that is very sporty, handles very well. You can live with every day. And now a lot of you people who are fans of the N model are just gonna say, I can live with my N every day. So could I, I could live with a track car every day. My wife couldn't, she just couldn't. It's a little too extreme, a little bit aggressive ride. Uh, the noises, the pops, all those things that are cool to people like you and I, maybe not so much to her. So this is that car that does everything for you, handles very well, performs very well, but it is a road going car, which means it's still compliant in its ride. 
It's still comfortable on a cross-country trip if you wanted to. However, it has sneaky good handling, very good grip, uh, kind of an immediacy to the shifts and uh, turning. It is a very fun to drive car. And the thing that we talked about yesterday with the Forte 5 GT, the reason that I like it so much, is because I feel like if you bought that car and exactly the same if you bought this car, you will find that five years later, seven years later, when maybe some of the technology gets a little bit out of date, you're still gonna have a big smile driving this car and that's why it's worth buying. So what we're gonna do today, driver's seat, back seat, trunk space, some of the lighting features, some of the special features, the tech features, and we're gonna answer your questions. We spend about a half an hour going through these cars. We go really in depth. Nobody else goes in depth like we are. So if you wanna know about this car, this is your video. And if you wanna know about anything else, Kia or Hyundai, let me tell you guys, the next couple months are really gonna be exciting. We'll talk about that later. Hit the subscribe button, hit the view button. All right, so here we go. Somebody says, I like the N-Line exterior, but I bought the Ultimate Tech because the N-Line doesn't have a 10 and a quarter inch display. Yeah, that's true. So um, let's just show you what it does have. First of all, I'm gonna show you the key so I can put it in my pocket and forget it the rest of the time. There we go, this is your key. Lock, unlock, remote start in the middle from the key fob. Hold the trunk button there to open it and you can hold that last button to get the horn to honk. You don't want to do that accidentally, and you won't, because it's just a well-designed key. It doesn't happen accidentally. So I put that in my pocket. I can use this button right here to unlock the door, whether I just want to lock the driver's door or all of them. In line, inside here, this is a cloth model. You're looking at $27,799, which may seem like a lot to you. This is how I would equip it. Somebody just said in the comment section they went the ultimate. The ultimate has the leather. It's very nice. I kind of like it like this. I do like the 10 and a quarter inch screen. This one has an eight inch screen, but we're gonna talk about the differences in those right here. So let's jump in right now. All right, first of all, let's turn the car to the on position. You have this push button start kind of on the top here. Instead of facing where I push in, I actually push down on that start button. We are indoors, so we're not gonna fully start the car. Here we go, left side tack center speedometer, which is a little different than they've been doing, and right side information display that I currently have set up as a digital display, which we could change a little bit here. This car does not have a red theme, but you can change the theme a little bit. I feel like that would be good, but if you just look at the rest of the stuff here, again, ignore fuel efficiency numbers there. That is not gonna be accurate. I've had this car idling for a little bit uh, for various things that I'm doing with it. Um, but yeah, you have a multi, multi, multi information display here, lane keep assist, driver attention level. You've got your tire pressure monitors that show individual tire pressures per wheel. Uh, lots of information in there as well. So we're gonna keep on the speedometer just because I like the speedometer there. Um, drive mode is actually kind of a helpful information as well. Anyways, you can put it wherever you want. The other person that was talking just now, they said they bought the Ultimate because they really like the 10 and a quarter inch screen. And there is a trim line essentially above this, but in some ways it's not as much above this as it is different than this. The reason I like this car, hey, my lights just turned out outside. Oh, well, no big deal. The reason I like this car, again, 10 and a quarter inch screen is nice, but as of time of filming right now, the 10 and a quarter inch screen does not have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and this car does. So compared to the Forte 5 GT that we looked at yesterday, that's a big upgrade that you get in this Elantra that's not quite available in the Kia world yet, something worth considering. So that wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay transforms this car because this car does not come with factory navigation. And the biggest thing with um, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is if you have that wire connected anyways, um, or if you don't have that wire connected, you don't have navigation in a lot of these cars. On this one, you have Google Map, Apple Maps, uh, and including a whole bunch of other things. And those are the two most up-to-date maps in the world, and you get that navigation right there in the screen. So I can be going to a friend's place, um, plans change, I can call up Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever it is uh, right on the screen, whether you have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and uh, you can figure out where you want to go, those kind of things, as well as all the other music features, other features of Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. And the nice thing about having Android Auto, Apple CarPlay at all is it updates uh, much more regularly than your car would. So as the apps update, as the phones update, as things update, your car will always be up to date. And having it wireless is one feature that I think you will not regret having in the future. So we've got that in there. So tech-wise, we've got a pretty nice looking screen here. Uh, sporty, again, this is a dual clutch transmission, which is quick shifting. The bigger thing is the turbo engine, that 1.6 turbo. So when your car's idling, you've got around 1,000 RPM or so, in or so, that range. About 1450, so pretty low down on the revs, you've got maximum torque on this engine. What that means is the car you're driving right now probably makes its maximum pulling power, that pushing power that you feel, up and around this range. You gotta rev it up to get to that maximum horsepower, or maximum torque, excuse me. This car, you have maximum torque right down here. If you put it in the sport drive mode, it's probably always gonna stay in that area, which means you have that feeling of maximum power, maximum pulling power, 
right there because you actually have all of your torque. Torque is the power you feel. Horsepower is kind of like a um, higher speed, top speed power. So the acceleration power is all torque. And all of that power comes in very low in the revs. And that makes this car exceptionally fun to drive. And it gives it a, a feeling of having more power than it actually has because again, your peak number doesn't matter. If, you're, if your car makes peak torque up here, unless you're revving the snot out of it, that's all you feel. But if you're feeling your peak power right in this range all the way up, that changes the way the car feels and it does a good job with that. Now, looking down here, I apologize for the outside light going on. I've got some vehicles blocking my motion sensor light. You've got paddle shifters in a number of our cars, but these ones are longer. They drop down here below as well. Normally they just stick out a little bit in front. So wherever you have your hand on the wheel, you can reach your paddle shifter up or all the way down if you're turning the wheel at the same time. Um, unless you're going like really around a sharp corner, a regular road turn, you can reach these with your hands on the wheel where they are and they're right there. So you've got this ability to shift your gears on your own if you want to, or you can just let it be the um, regular car, everyday commuter car that it is. Lane follow assist is a nice upgrade as well that you see in this level of car. It uses the camera in the back behind this mirror shooting out forward to look for lane markers. Once it sees the lane markers, it keeps you in the center by actively steering your car. We talk about self-driving cars. Uh, a lot of people talk about Tesla's autopilot. This is very similar to the autopilot because Tesla's autopilot is in no way autopilot. The same way as their full self-drive is in no way full self-drive. What it is is basically lane centering technology and we have that here in this Lantern. So on a long drive, put your hand up here on the white wheel or wherever you put it on the wheel and you're not constantly doing this to keep it in the center of the lane you just put your hand on the wheel the car keeps itself centered it's super helpful really good feature a lot of people really love that feature i mentioned this uh, before here about the android auto apple carplay let's talk about the radio on the radio you'll see sirius xm satellite radio you also have um a bose audio system here now i don't think it's labeled i was just looking for the label i don't see the label but i believe bose audio is standard in this car mostly because it sounded fantastic and the spec sheet says it has it so i'm just looking for anywhere it says bose i used to do that 2021 they don't do that uh, but it's it is a bose audio system in this car and uh it works very very well so great sound wireless android auto apple carplay and when you have wireless android auto and apple carplay one of the things that i think you should really want is down here, you have a wireless phone charger. Really hard to see down there, but there's a nice deep area where I can put my phone here, and it does wirelessly charge. There's a little bit of an indent there. Again, lights off, it's very hard to see. A little bit of an indent, but it holds very large phones, and it is a wireless charge pad. If you wanna plug your phone in, you also have two USBs and a 12 volt down here, which you can put in there. So lots of options to keep your phone charged. But again, you set your phone there whenever you drive, you need to call up wireless CarPlay, Apple or Android Auto, you can do that. The other nice thing about this model is it has dual zone automatic temperature control. So I can set both sides or I can set just the one side on its own. As you can see, it gets kind of noisy in here and the fans blow pretty hard as I turn it up here. Oh, I turn it down is what I need to do. There we go. As I turn it down, I sync it back up. It gets pretty loud in here. So what you can do is you can use this auto setting and turn those fans down. So the auto setting does not just control the fan speed, it also controls where the car is throwing the air. In the winter, it's gonna throw the uh, heat to your feet primarily and let the hot air rise. In the summer, it's gonna throw the air conditioning out the top and let the cool air fall. So when you have it on that auto setting, it seems like it's fairly loud in here to you, but it's actually turned way down and it's working very hard, but not maximum. The fan is no higher than a lower level, which is around a medium type level compared to here where it gets much louder in here. And what that does is, let's just turn it off. What that does is that auto system allows you to just get a little slower to reach that temperature, keeps the uh, volume of that fan down. And the other reason it's kind of nice is if someone gets out of the car and back into the car, the fan's gonna blow like crazy for about a minute to bring that car right down that extra half degree and then calm itself down. Whereas this one, it'll just kind of casually pick up, casually uh, cool off. So that auto climate control with those three levels is kind of an underrated thing that I really encourage you to look for in a car because it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, I never thought I would use it nearly the way I do, but every time I'm in one of these cars, I'm just turning it up or down depending on my preference at the moment. And of course, having the auto setting it automatically is moving air, it automatically is slowing itself down, speeding itself up the way I want it to, to the temperature that I want it to reach. You also have maybe a little bit hidden here, heated steering wheel, which is super nice, rump roasters, heated seats, driver and passenger side, three levels of heat seating in there, automatic transmission, which is an excellent uh, feeling transmission. You got a nice shift, shift knob, 
throw it in drive. If you pop it this way, you can shift gears on your own if you want, or you can just leave it in there and drive it uh, as normal. And uh, you also have those paddle shifters. Then you've got this parking button right here, which, uh, oh, I forgot to take the sticker off. This is a very clear camera that you can't tell. There's a sticker on top of the camera right now, so I have to clean that off. Uh, normally, it's a very clear camera. So again, if you're not watching with me, turn on the volume, take out, uh, turn up the volume. That is a very clear camera. I forgot to take that sticker off. All right, let's jump out. We're going to take your questions right now. Do me a favor, guys. There's about 29 of you on. Uh, let's see if we can get to, can we get to 30 likes today? Let's see if we can do that. We're about halfway there. 13 people said, yes, this is worth a like today. Do me a favor, hit the heads up button or the heads up, hit the like button. We'll see if we can get there. All right, let's jump out. Oh, I didn't show you drive modes. And the one thing different about drive modes in this car, they are on this side here. So it's a nice, simple, thumb touch button right there, which is what they do, of course, in the end models as well. All right, come back to me. I'm gonna get my light turned on. I apologize for the lights turning off. It's on a motion sensor. And when our salespeople store vehicles in here, it blocks my light. All right, let's come back to you. If you have any questions, now's a great time to ask them and uh, I will get to them. And where are, we, where are we headed next? We're gonna talk some of the safety features in this car. We're gonna go rear wheel or rear wheel drive, rear doors, uh, rear seats, excuse me, trunk space and lighting. And like I said, safety features, this car is loaded with them. So we're gonna talk about some of those as well. And let's keep digging in here. What's the rear leg space? We're gonna show you that in just a second. Hey, have you done the trunk thing yet? Not yet. Where did I buy my Kia shirt? I get it from my dealership. That's, I work at the, so again, we film for our dealer group here. Um, we film for our dealer group, which is Brantford Hyundai, Owen Sound Hyundai, and um, uh, Brantford Kia. But we film inside what we'll soon say Brantford Kia Studios. And uh, that's why the wall is painted black. Um, so that's why I wear a Kia uniform because I do help the Kia dealership. That's where my office is based out of and that's where I work. Uh, but we film for the whole thing. So you will see some Kia logos on or some of our Hyundai videos. And that's simply because where I work uh, during the day is not always in the same thing. Is this car quiet when it runs? Yes, it has a little bit of a rumble. Um, so they've tuned it a little bit differently. It has a nice uh, sounding thing. You want to hear it running, no problem, but you won't probably see it on this video. We are going to stay indoors. There's a lot of good videos of these cars test driving, and I don't mind you guys watching some of those. Um, I don't have the sound equipment to really reproduce it properly, uh, so especially on these live videos. So I'm not going to run it in here today. Maybe I can run it at the very end of the video when we drive it out or something, uh, but it does sound uh, very good. It's not like the end model that really rumbles and pops. All right. Thank you for reviewing the Veloster N. You're getting the same one? Awesome, that's a super good car. That N is a lot of fun. But again, it is a little more extreme than this. Tucson Ultimate Hybrid, best options and price. Oh, we can talk about that uh, uh, later. Hold on. Looked at the thumbnail and thought it was a Civic. Oh yeah, okay, it's got some sharp edges, maybe Civic lined, but it is definitely not. Um, Hyundai's going with this real sharp edge thing, and of course, Civic has now moved away from some of that. So, uh, but certainly that blue color would appeal to Honda people. All right, let's keep going through here. Still looking for a few more likes. If we can get to 10 more likes before the next 10 minutes or so, that'd be awesome. So uh, let's see what we can do. All right, rear seat space. This car has not been detailed properly, so I do apologize for some of the dirt uh, on the outside and in the inside. Uh, very busy day for me just right before I go on vacation, so I didn't get to do everything I would have liked to. Hopping in this car, let's flip it around to me. You can see headroom here is pretty good. I don't have to duck too much. I'm gonna be really honest. I just, uh, oh, the seat wasn't latched in. <laughs> Uh, really honest here, this seat is actually further back than I needed. I was putting a little bit further back to film. What I like is, even with that, there's lots of knee room here. My seat is basically, my legs are basically flat on the seat, and I've got good headroom here. Not a ton, but I've got plenty. And again, I'm a six footer sitting behind a six footer, and really I'm sitting behind a more than six footer. I could move that back a little bit or forward a little bit to drive there. Back here, a couple things I want to point out. You do have, come on camera. You do have plastic back seats. So again, some of the shipping stickers are still on this car. You can wipe these down with a wet cloth. And if your kids get their feet all up there, they're easy to clean. You do have a pocket, but only on the passenger side. No vents or ports on this particular model. You got to move up to that luxury model to get some of those things. So what is this car for? People who want an engaging driving experience, a driver centric thing. Uh, the cloth seats are great on a sportier car because they hold you in place better than leather. I happen to like them because they're a little bit warmer in the winter. You do have those rump roasters, heated seats that are nice. Uh, the one thing I think I forgot to point out is you also have a sunroof in this car. So when you're sitting in the driver's environment, you've got pretty much everything you could want, including that opening sunroof. Um, however, in the back seats, uh, like I said, it's not the top line. They got to make some cuts somewhere and this is where they do it. Less vents, less ports, uh, but still very good comfort. And you do have, if I can show you here, come on. I think this is the very first time it's been pulled around. Oops, there. 
Very first item pulled out is the armrest with the cup holder. So falls readily in place. This is a four passenger car that can fit five people. And to be fair, it's more comfortable to fit five people than some other cars. But most time you're gonna carry four people in this and this is really good for that. All right, let's do the trunk test now. Those of you that uh, follow me for the very first time today or watching this for the very first time today, may be surprised what we use as a trunk measurement tool. I'll show you that in just a second here. All right, flip around here. Back lights look pretty cool in this model. You do get the upper level lights on this car. Um, you have a line that, in your camera, this is a red light, but it looks far more amber-ish. And this red line matches that in color exactly. Because it's different in brightness, the camera has trouble picking up the two differences. So really clean line that almost looks identical across the whole thing to me but I guess that's a hair brighter. It's hard to really say in person. The camera is definitely not picking it up right. One little thing I do like, even though it's a sedan, you have a little push button there, and there's our camera. Remember I said the camera wasn't very clear? This is the little blue tab that comes on that makes that camera very messy. All right, so you've got the little button there. We can pull that little plastic off there as well. These cars come wrapped in plastic, but there is a button there to pop, and you have a pretty good sized trunk in here. Uh, so again, sedans have those really long floors, much longer than the average uh, crossover. So I'm gonna throw my teddy bear in there. You can see he's gonna be a little tight for space lengthwise when I throw him all the way back there, but that's almost bonus space compared to the average SUV. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's take teddy bear here. Those of you wonder why I use a teddy bear, because teddy bear is consistent. Every video I do where I talk about trunk space, I use teddy bear in here and I put his belly against the back seat so you can see when I show you how teddy bear fits. Now again, he's tight between those wheels, but he's way up there and you could fit an entire other teddy bear over here. And to be fair, if you do that, teddy bear has all the length and space that he needs. Whoops, sorry about that camera work there. But Teddy Bear has all the length and space that he needs. And again, you can fit another Teddy Bear in behind him there, just squish down a little bit there. So Teddy Bear is very comfortable in here and you also have pretty good height. Some of the crossovers we've been looking at, their, um, their trunk lids come down, their, their privacy covers come down right to Teddy's tummy. And you can see here, you've got a lot of space in there. So really just good overall space in this Elantra. And of course you can pull the seats pull that tab to put the seats down as well. All right, gonna put Teddy Bear back for a second. We showed you the rear lighting. Let's just show you the front lighting first. And we'll talk about some safety things. Um, and then we'll move on, take your questions and we'll probably wrap this one up after that. Just finish your previous video. Oh, there we go. Somebody's writing in now. All right, out front, you've got these as marker lights. Let's see if I can go with a little less glare. Oh, there's a lot of glare on the lights and the windows. So again, didn't detail this car. You can see some of the dirt on the light there. You have these as LED lights. They are very white in person. Those are your marker lights. Now those have a function. They also share, spread some light up top. Because these LED headlights have super, such a sharp cutoff, you would have trouble seeing the bright red stop sign up here if you didn't scatter some light somehow. So what they do is they use these LED driving lights that can sometimes appear to flicker on camera. They're not flickering in real life. And those will be what light up all the reflective signs. You can't see it in here because it's a fairly bright room. I know it looks dark, but there's a ton of light in this room. And uh, what you end up with here is a really sharp cut off headlight. So you've got that really high end look to the front of the car, really bright light. Again, we'll do that one more time, really bright. And that gives you a nice sharp cutoff, which means you're not gonna be making other people sort of blinded by your headlights, but you do have incredibly bright white lights. They don't even look the same color on my camera because it can't film that exact brightness, um, but really bright and clean. And when you're driving at night, the color of that light allows your eyes to very quickly identify anything that might be there. So you know exactly what you're seeing, very easy to drive with. Let's talk some safety features. We've got some lane follow, lane keeping assist. We talked about that. Um, which means we can, the car can steer for itself. You also have a forward camera for collision avoidance. You have blind spot detection. You have a lot of things in here and blind spot uh, rear cross traffic alert as well. So a lot of things in here that are really good for keeping you out of an accident. When people talk safety nowadays, a lot of cars crash well now. Basically, if you don't crash well, you're probably not keeping up with just the average cars right now. The difference between real top safety pick plus and just a soft top safety pick is the top safety pick plus, they usually have to have collision avoidance systems and this car has that. What's the difference between lane follow and lane keep? Uh, the short answer is lane follow is exactly that. It will follow the lane. Lane keeping assist has an active spot. Um, it will also keep you centered in the lane, but lane follow assist is a more advanced system. 
uh, that is a little more precise. It works with using more variables and it also works at lower speed. So lane follow is gonna be a little more precise to keep you centered. Lane keep is gonna bounce you in and out of the lane a little bit. Uh, it can keep you centered on many of our cars and it does a good job, but lane follow is just a better system. So you have both of them on this car. You can turn your lane follow assist off and stay within the lane. The, lane, the new lane keeping assist keeps you in the lane. The old lane keep assist with active would center you, but only under certain conditions. Lane follow assist can center you in a lot more conditions and a lot more speeds. So good question there. I'm gonna jump in just because I want to show you that rear view camera again. I feel like I didn't do it justice and somebody's gonna say the camera's really not that good. And now that we peel that sticker off there, let's just show you how this, it looks. It is clear. You can see everything. You can see the hair on teddy bear. So this is good. Is this height friendly? I'm 6'3", I'd, would I be comfortable? Okay, so you're 6'3". I just put the seat down a little bit lower. You're 6'3", right? I'm six feet, right? Like you're gonna have room, you're gonna be fine. And I've got the seat up fairly right. I can lean it back further as well. But yeah, I'm six feet. You're gonna be just fine in here if you're 6'3". Um, so there we go, great, great question there. Any more questions, go ahead, ask them right now. And uh, let's flip the camera back around. We'll show you the car. Again, look at that really clear backup camera. You can see the sparkle on that Sorento over there. You can see the, uh, almost the fur on the teddy bear. I'm filming a screen, so it's very hard to show clarity that way, but it's also very wide angle. And one thing that's pretty cool, turn the wheel, the yellow and red lines guide, basically where the car is going, the blue line will line up with that parking space that you're backing up into. So you just put those side lines exactly where those blue lines are and you will be dead center in that lane. Really easy to park this car because of a really good backup camera. All right, I felt like that was uh, a must do thing because it just, uh, I didn't do it justice when I had that sticker on there. All right, jump back in. We're gonna take your questions. We're gonna probably leave this at about the 30 minute mark. Um, like I said, I do have a vacation coming up. So if you're looking for me tomorrow, I won't be here, but I do have a video coming out with uh, maybe a reason to subscribe. Too bad it doesn't have the digital instrument cluster. Yeah, I'm okay with that. This is an Elantra, um, you know, it's not the top line car. Obviously those things will work their way down through every car. Um, but I'm okay with it. All right, what do we got? Da, da, da. Thinking of getting this over 2022 Civic, the Elantra's a great looking car. You know what? I would get this over a Civic too. And I'm not just saying that because I'm wearing a badge or because I work for a company. I do think this is a nicer car than the Civic. Um, yeah, there's just, there's some nice things here. Uh, I've driven them both. I just really like this car. It's lower and wider, I think. So when we talk about lower and wider, there's a perception that this car is very wide. And you get that from looking at the rear, but I wanna show you why. A lot of cars come square and kind of level out here. So they're kind of raised. Let me just show you a better angle. A lot of cars come down here and kind of level out at the trunk lid. So you have more height at the trunk lid. Because it comes down and because they have these visual deceptive cues like those lights that go right to the edge, it appears to be very, very wide. It's not really that wide, but they have some squared off edges. So it's wide to the end. Again, a lot of cars kind of curl in at the side more and the curl in more. So it appears to be very wide and it appears to, because it's a lower end there, it appears to be very low. Same thing here when you compare it to the Forte. It comes down here where the Forte will come out square. This comes down further. When it comes down further like that, it looks very low on the front end, which gives the appearance of a really good width. Uh, but the reality is it's not that wide. It's still a relatively compact car. It's a larger compact car but it's nowhere near a mid-sized car. And um, that still makes it easy to park, but gives the illusion of space. Now, what I like about the illusion of a larger car is this looks like a lot more expensive car than it is. It's kind of a cool, people assume a larger car is a little bit more expensive. You've got some nice features inside, so you can really convince people you spent some good coin on this, but you didn't. Okay, priced very well. Yeah, it is priced very well. Really competitive pricing on this car. All right, I think that's everything. Is there any regulars that said I missed something? If there's something I missed, feel free to let me know. Do you know if they plan to make a hybrid version for this car? They do. I've been trying to get the hybrid version. It's already out. Uh, I tried to get it, but we dealer traded it the day I was trying to get it. So um, inventory is always kind of constantly moving thing. Uh, I can't take people's cars if they're sold to them, obviously, because I have to drive across town to get it to our studios here. So I will have an Elantra hybrid in the video bay. Uh, it's a pretty cool car, gets great fuel mileage, uh, kind of quiet, kind of nice, um, but I have not been able to get it on video yet. So there is a hybrid version out already, you can get it. So there we go. Uh, this has a CVT, I prefer the DCT in the Atlanta. Yeah, dual clutch transmission in this particular one. So again, this has, has an IVT transmission in some of the other models, but this model does have the dual clutch transmission. So there we go. 
Uh, da, 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 da. All right, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it right there, guys. So what's going on? I'm heading on vacation. I've got a vacation uh, for six days or so. I don't know, number of days or so. I'm, we got a long weekend coming up here in Canada. So I've got a vacation coming up now. I'm gonna take another one in August, but I'm gonna release a video this afternoon just as a little teaser of some of the things that are to come because there's some big stuff coming up both in this month, throughout the end of this month, and beyond that. So again, if I'm not gonna hit you every day like I do now uh, with these live videos, I do want you to know that when I get back, there's some stuff going on. So again, I'm back for a week or so and then I'm going away again. August is a good time for me to get away because there's not a lot of new car stuff. And then September through May, I don't take time off. Uh, we're gonna be, September through May, we're gonna be here, we're gonna show you stuff. So again, look for that little video when I'm gone. It'll just be a short uh, few minute video telling you what's coming up. It's a reason to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, why don't you just hit that button right now and uh, do me a favor, hit the like button. We're one away. We're gonna go for 32 likes, I think it was. One away from that 32 likes. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great uh, time. I will see you again when I get back. You can follow me on Instagram if you want. Last time I went away, I posted my daily story still and I just did my vacation. I might do the same thing this time. We'll see. Maybe I'll have some cool vacation photos up there if I take some cool stuff. So uh, let me know if you want me to, if you want to uh, follow along. And yeah, we'll talk there. Any news in 2022 Sorrento? We'll talk about that in my upcoming video that'll be launched this afternoon. But what I know, what I don't know, what I expect, what I don't expect um, of stuff that's coming up. So we'll do that. We'll launch that this afternoon before I go on vacation and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks everybody for watching. Have a good one. We'll see you later.